Mr. Chairman, uh, Secretary Anil Wadwa, uh, fellow panelists, uh, distinguished uh, participants, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, uh, I'd like to express uh, my sincere thanks to the Ministry of External Affairs uh, as well as uh, IDSA and uh, other partners in the Delhi dialogue process for bringing in ISIS Malaysia, I have to emphasize, ISIS Malaysia, uh, into this uh, Delhi dialogue process. Uh, we're very happy to be a partner. I had the opportunity of uh, participating at last year's uh, dialogue, and uh, uh, I'm equally uh, happy that uh, I'm here today. Now, much has been said uh, by the, the, the speakers before me, as well as the presentations uh, throughout the day, uh, I, like uh, the others, would confine my comments to the future direction for the uh, ASEAN-India dialogue uh, of strategic partnership, as well as on the Delhi dialogue process. Uh, I hope what appears in the program book is just uh, a typographical error. It says future directions. As an optimist, I would rather use direction because what we are looking for is going forward, not in different directions. Now, going forward, uh, we know that uh, we are looking at post-2015 ASEAN as well as post-2015 ASEAN and its uh, strategic partners. Um, we know that uh, ASEAN is looking to establish the community by the end of this year. The ASEAN Economic Community, subsequently as well the ASEAN Political Security com Community as well as the ASEAN Social Cultural Community. Some of these points have been touched upon uh, throughout the day. Now, there seems to be the impression, at least what I find in, in Malaysia, among some people, that by the 1st of January 2016, there'll be a new dawn, the sun will be shining bright, uh, you know, things will change in ASEAN. No, it, it's, it's just another development in the process of the evolution of ASEAN regional integration. Now, for Malaysia, as the chairman uh, of ASEAN now, the emphasis is towards ensuring that all the processes, all the action lines, all the steps that are necessary towards bringing the ASEAN economic community are in place by that time. And uh, this commitment is not just from Malaysia, it's from all the ASEAN countries. We know that frenetic work is going on. The ASEAN economic ministers just had their retreat uh, uh, this month. The ASEAN foreign ministers had their retreat earlier in January. And there are a series of other meetings that are going to take place. And subsequently, of course, there'll be meetings uh, involving the ASEAN dialogue partners. Now, for Malaysia, the emphasis would be on a people-centered people, orient a people ASEAN. The ASEAN Charter talks about the people-oriented ASEAN, but we would like to emphasize a people-centered ASEAN, which is basically how to better the lot of the 620 million people in ASEAN. So I believe that in the context of ASEAN-India relations and ASEAN-India strategic partnership, perhaps India should be thinking along those lines, which is how to better the lot of the combination of the people of ASEAN and India to the extent that this strategic partnership is seen as a people-centered strategic partnership. Um, I think... Uh, what needs to be emphasized also, as Ambassador Batia has uh, mentioned, is the younger population of our countries, the youth. Um, if When we move forward, and uh, by the year 2030, 2050, and so on, the studies have shown that uh, whilst the population of Japan, China would be aging, the population of India will still remain relatively young, the population of ASEAN, similarly. So that would mean perhaps greater productivity in these areas, 
there would this would be new centers of production. This would also be new centers of innovation and so on and so forth. Uh, there is certainly a rising middle class in ASEAN as well as India. Just uh, to quote some statistics, although I'm not I'm not one who likes to go for statistics, but uh, perhaps just to emphasize the point, this is a study done by Nielsen. In 2012, according to Nielsen, there were 190 million people in the middle class in ASEAN, out of 600 million or so, 210 million in India, and 120 million in uh, the United States. By the year 2020, the expectation is that there will be 400 million people in the middle class in ASEAN, 540 million in India, 125 million in the United States, 100 million in Brazil, and 120 million in Britain, France, and Germany combined. Now, the definition given by Nielsen for the middle class is someone who's, who has a disposable income, a daily disposable income of between $16 to $100. Uh, now, of course, when we talk about the youth, we're talking about the Gen Y, we're talking about the millennials now, uh, we're talking about people who have new thinking, people who have different ways of doing things, they have higher expectations, they are expected to be more productive, but they are also highly mobile. They don't want to be told, they need to be informed, they don't want to be uh, subjected to complicated rules and regulations and so on and so forth. They tend to move from job to job uh, as they please. Sometimes uh, they even uh, can quit a job for the sake of doing some work with civil society organizations or humanitarian activities and so on and so forth. This is a new group of people that we should be looking at, but they are also technology savvy. They are also people who are into disruptive technology, which requires change and so on and so forth. Now, here we are talking about space technology and all kinds of other technology, but uh, the, the excitement that will be seen in the future, I think, is for these people to, to be working on. And I am all for the idea of bringing in the representative of youth into the Delhi dialogue process. Now, the question of how do we manage the, the uh, expectations of the young people uh, and plan for their future, I think, is, is very important. Uh, just to let you know that uh, uh, as part of its chairmanship, Malaysia is working on organizing an ASEAN Youth Assembly. Uh, by the end of this year. Now, I'm not uh, very much privy to, to the full details, but what I know is that the, the idea here is to, to give a voice to the young people in ASEAN, and I'm sure, again, as part of the Delhi dialogue process, we could do something along similar lines in the future. Another thing is, on this very point about being people-centered, you have the Make in India initiative by the Prime Minister and the government. In the context of ASEAN-India strategic partnership, I think there could be a time in the near future, perhaps, again, picking up the point that has been made by previous speakers, to have a Made in India Plus initiative, which is through connectivity, through uh, uh, these various efforts that are ongoing now, you could have Indian industries and industries in ASEAN working uh, with uh, proper synergy and cooperation. Now, I think another point that needs to be taken into account is that if you're looking at post-2015 in the international context, we'll be talking about the sustainable development goals. Now, sustainable development is, of course, an important issue that not only India and ASEAN should be looking at, but the whole international community. This is where I think that India and ASEAN could work on uh, quite successfully. Uh, because when we talk about sustainable development, you will 
also be looking at environment, climate change, the water, energy and food nexus, pandemic disease, sanitation and so on and so forth. Another point uh, which I would like uh, to bring up is just to expand a little bit on people-to-people -people connectivity. There's been talk about connectivity of cultures and so on, but I think the connectivity of ideas is very important. Hence, that's where the, the role of the youth would come in. Uh, there are, of course, certain initiatives that have been taken by civil society organizations and uh, NGOs and so on, on some basic activities which could be helpful to the people in the rural areas in both India and the ASEAN countries, for example. Uh, th there are many of these, uh, including the use of uh, uh, the, the production of methane gas, gas from uh, waste products and things like that. Um, now, I think uh, earlier on, uh, Dr. Day has talked about the barriers to trade. But I think in this particular case, not only India, but ASEAN also has to do its part because there's still a lot of issues and problems that need to be resolved within ASEAN. So connectivity, if you're talking about seamless activities, connectivity, connections between the ports and so on and so forth, will not come about if, you know, some of these issues are not resolved within ASEAN itself. Okay, I would like now to move the, to the Delhi dialogue process itself. I fully agree with uh, Ambassador Pillay about uh, the role of the business sector, the private sector. I'm very happy that uh, there was actually a business uh, session yesterday. Uh, I had planned to, to attend that session, but for some unforeseen reasons, uh, partly because we are away somewhere near the airport uh, uh, and uh, we were not able to, to attend that session, but I'm sure it was successful. The only thing I had hoped is that there could be a sort of a fusion uh, of the, the uh, topics as well as the subjects that are being discussed uh, as well as the participation between that session and this session because otherwise it would it might appear that you have a business session this is where all the business is done you have an academic session this is where all the talk is done so I think the idea of having a business session is certainly good, but there, there could be some way of bringing together the participants at some point in time. And uh, perhaps Ambassador Pillay's idea of making having a longer session, perhaps over two days, uh, could be considered in that respect. Um, the other point uh, I would like to make is that uh, I would agree that uh, we need to focus on specific and pressing issues out of the long wish list. Otherwise, we'll be repeating the same thing over and over again every time you have a dialogue. So it is important for us to pause at some point in time, take stock of what, what has happened, clear bottlenecks, resolve the problems. And by bringing in other players, the business sector, the youth, uh, the parliamentarians, as suggested, CSOs and so on, I think we can get uh, better amalgamation of ideas as to how to move forward in this process. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.